Drive Time on RTE Radio 1, sponsored by Zurich. When family is all that matters, make sure they're protected. Visit Zurich.ie to learn more about life and serious illness cover. Documents leaked to the Guardian newspaper appear to show that Russian President Vladimir Putin authorised a Kremlin plan to get Donald Trump elected as US President. The documents date from January 2016, before Trump had won a single state primary. They describe the future president as an impulsive, mentally unstable and unbalanced individual who suffers from an inferiority complex and whose election could help sow social turmoil in the US. Well, to analyse this, we're joined by the Director of the Conflict Studies Research Centre, Keir Giles. And Keir, how authentic do these documents look to you? Well, of course, it'll never be possible to tell exactly whether they are genuine or not, because certainly Russia won't admit to uh, to ever having produced them. But to everybody that has knowledge of Russian government procedures and how Russian government documents look and the decision making process within the Kremlin, they ring 100 percent true. And of course, they also fit completely with the known facts about what Russia attempted to do with the uh, with the U.S. elections and with Russia's overall objectives for the United States as a whole. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence which makes this look very convincing. And if it's a forgery, it's an exceptionally competently produced one. Mm. And yet it is very unusual, isn't it, to get leaks from the Kremlin? It's vanishingly unusual. Uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a notoriously hard intelligence target, even to just to get uh, leaks from the decision-making process inside uh, inside that complex itself. So to actually have a copy of a live document, a smoking gun document from the Kremlin, it's unheard of. Uh, let's assume then that these documents are genuine for, for the moment. And, and if they are, what do they tell us about the Kremlin and its view of Donald Trump and US politics? Well, the strange thing is, it's convincing because it really doesn't tell us anything new except confirming all the things that we had previously suspected or assumed or deduced. It's hard to fault the assessment of Donald Trump's character or of the impact of his presidency on the United States. Uh, It ties in not only with Russia's known intelligence view of its adversaries like the US, but actually with what subsequently played out in real life. So the fact that all of this is really just so normal and there is nothing in it which really makes you uh, prick up your ears and think that's that's a little strange or unusual really plays into this this overwhelming impression that this seems a very plausible document. There were rumours throughout Donald Trump's presidency that the Russians had some compromising material on him and some reports about what that material might be. Um, Do these documents go into any detail on that? Unfortunately, not the ones that have actually been released through The Guardian. There are coy references to appendices to the document and specific paragraphs in those appendices which detail certain events when Donald Trump came on uh, unofficial visits to the US previously, uh, which, of course, everybody has leapt to the conclusion that that is the same as what was described in the uh, in the collection of rumour t- uh, brought together by Christopher Steele, the so-called uh, Trump dossier earlier. So, again, it fits, but uh, with Without seeing the whole package, and in particular knowing how the Guardian journalist Luke Harding came to receive it, it's hard to say any more about its provenance. Mm. In terms of what it, it does tell us then, as you say, the, the broad outlines perhaps are not that surprising because it, it, it maps onto what we would have heard or suspected um, throughout Trump's presidency. But does it give us any details as to how Vladimir Putin or the Kremlin tried to help or did help perhaps in the election of Donald Trump? Well, it gives some details on what they wanted to do. But again, we don't have the the full package, so we don't know exactly what instructions were given to carry that out. There is details on how uh, the the decision-making organization within the Kremlin, led by President Putin, parcels out different tasks, different parts of the, the overall mission of destabilizing American democracy and getting Donald Trump elected to different agencies, like the Foreign Intelligence Agency, the Military Intelligence Directorate, and all of these different levers of power that Russia then subsequently exerted against the United States. But the fine detail of what what actually took place uh, is not included in this document, and perhaps it wouldn't be, because this is supposed to be from an early stage of the planning of all of this, really when the decision was made to press the go button, as opposed to actually working through the plans themselves. All right, Keir Giles, Director of the Conflict Studies Research Centre, thank you very much for joining us.